Baruch here with GenConnect.com, joined today by Mayor Mitch Landry from New Orleans. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for being it's here. It's great to be here. It's wonderful. It is beautiful. I mean, you kind of can't beat it, right? <laughs> I mean, it, although we could be in New Orleans. We could be. We could Speak, be, but this is pretty nice. This is not bad. Speaking right. of New Orleans, it has been faced with several challenges over the last several years. Is New Orleans a different place today than it was pre-Katrina? It, you know, it's quite an extraordinary story. We, we had... Most people don't remember this, but post-September 11, New Orleans had a hard time because um, a, a good portion of our economy is based on tourism. And after September 11, the people quit flying. I mean, the tourism market went down, you know, to the bottom. And we had just climbed our way out right before Katrina hit. Then we had Katrina, then we had Rita, then we had Ike, then we had Gustav, then we had the National Recession, then we had the BP oil spill, right? And so what has happened, though, since that time, short seven years ago, we were 17 feet underwater. These are the things that other people are saying about us. Forbes is saying we're the fastest growing city in America two years in a row. We've grown 28%. Wow. Congratulations. Um, with the biggest, thank you. We're the biggest brain magnet in America. Our unemployment rate's lower than the national average. Our education system is outpacing every other one in the country. 80% of our kids are now in charter schools. We got the World Tourism Award last year. Um, and so you see a city that, for a whole bunch of different reasons, um, recognized that Katrina and Rita, as terrible as they were, didn't cause all of our problems. But we took it as really a responsibility. Some people claim it's an opportunity. It's really a convergence of the two to build the city that we always wanted to be. And we recognize that something had gone terribly wrong the 40 years before Katrina hit. And then of course, Katrina almost finished us off, but didn't. And the people through, I mean, a great amount of resilience and tenacity just got back up and then decided to do something really, that really few people in America decided to do, which was to take the things that we had that were great, that were rich, that were wonderful, that were authentic and keep them and really work hard to get rid of the stuff that kept us back. And so you see New Orleans transforming itself. So it is a completely, it is still the unique, beautiful, authentic city that it has always been with the great people, but it's got a spirit of optimism that it hasn't had in a very long period of time. And you see us really climbing out of, you know, the tough times and heading in, the, in a pretty good direction. And then New Orleans 2.0. No question about it. You know, Walter Ozick said we're in our third renaissance. So, you know, New Orleans will be 300 years old in 2018. And we've had two renaissances before. And I think the city is really poised, along with the country, by the way, because I think the country is in a, is in a very special place right now. It may be a little bit too soon to see, but we're coming out of two wars, notwithstanding the seeming dysfunction in Washington, D.C. Eventually, that will ease its way out. The market's coming back now. Um, and I think the country's in a place where if we take the opportunity to really be optimistic and bold, we can really do some fairly significant things. And I think New Orleans, ironically, is becoming the country's most immediate laboratory for innovation and change, whether it's in healthcare, entrepreneurship, education, infrastructure, government, whatever it might be, because we're having to rebuild everything from the ground up and we're trying new stuff. Speaking of entrepreneurship, how are you looking to attract new technology companies, new startups to New Orleans? Right, so something crazy happened even before Katrina occurred we started really thinking about entrepreneurship and how we could broadly stay focused on extracting raw materials like oil and gas or you know really adding value to the water that we had through the port of New Orleans that those are always two mainstays but we wanted to get into the business of a knowledge-based economy and really to start thinking about um, having jobs that did not rely on the natural resources or, or the talent that came out of the ground. So we started something in New Orleans, Tim Williams and his, and his team, called the Idea Village. And it was a hub for entrepreneurs to come and really start thinking about how to grow businesses, how to create something and add value out of nothing or add value to a big idea. Katrina and Rita hit. All of a sudden, all the young people from America come down to help. And they liked what they saw and they stayed. So the idea of Village and the whole entrepreneurship hub has grown tremendously, so much so now that um, when we just released our new economic development plan for the next five years, entrepreneurship, and particularly in digital media and other areas and high-tech areas as a focal point for what it is that we're doing. And so you know how this works. Folks start coming. It's a cool place to be. It's the a knowledge-based economy. Yeah. So Richard Florida wrote the book, The Creative Economy, way back when. Well, we have the cultural economy. And now what's happening in New Orleans is the creative economy and the cultural economy are getting married. And it's starting to produce some pretty amazing things. Turbo Squid is one of the companies that's coming out of the ground. Um, we're, doing a, we're doing a lot of stuff, as, it, as I said, with the movies right now. We're, we're probably the third largest producer of movies wow. in America. But now out of that came digital production, right? And a whole bunch of other things. And a lot of entrepreneurs now will come. We have an entrepreneur week. We actually have an entrepreneur season 
in New Orleans now, and things wow. are starting to reflect really well. How are you looking to compete with places like New York City, like Silicon Valley, when it comes to startups? Well, first of all, it's v that's very hard to do at this point. I mean, those guys are gargantuan, right. but you have to start somewhere. You know, and there was a time when Austin didn't have Austin City Limits, right? right. And it was a time when Nashville had a little bit of music, not a lot of music. Right. Um, and I think you have to believe that you can do it. And so what you want to do is build, you know, access to capital. You want to build technology to the extent that you can. You want to build incubators. And we're beginning to do that in New Orleans, and we're beginning to see some results. Now, clearly, so many people are inspired by New Orleans' resistance to adversity, to challenges. What inspires you? It's an, it really is an unconditional love for the place that you know as, as home. It's not really that surprising, to be honest with you. I know people are amazed at what the people in New Orleans have done, but they would do the same thing if your entire life, you know, and, and, and the house that you grew up in, the hospital that you went to, the school that you went to got destroyed. You would not walk away. I mean, right. that's the last thing that you would do. So as amazing as it is, because that's what you expect everybody to do, the people of New Orleans just did what came naturally to them. They didn't really have a choice. They had to stay and fight and they did it in a really meaningful way. What's wonderful about what they did, and it's a little bit different, is they decided to take it as a responsibility to create what should have always been. Because as you know, back in the day, way before you were born, a couple hundred years ago, <laughs> New Orleans was in fact the economic engine for what was later to become the United States of America. That's why Thomas Jefferson bought Louisiana, because of the presence of you know, access to the mouth of the Mississippi mm -hmm. River. And, uh, and we were a fairly robust economy, you know, and then the United States and things changed and cities got bigger, New Orleans got smaller. In 1960, the city of New Orleans was bigger than both Houston and Atlanta. Wow. Right? And so then both of these, so there's a reason why they grew and we didn't. Right. And so what New Orleans is doing is stopping, taking stock of herself, asking herself, look, how can we keep the stuff that really makes us special um, and discard the things that have really stopped us from competing on an international level with, on business? And uh, New Orleans sees herself as an international city. She is a part of the United States of America. She sees herself that way, but she also sees herself as really part of the global economy um, and, a, and a gateway to the United States of America. I like to, when I want people from New Orleans to feel good, I said, look, forget that you live at the bottom of the United States of America because yeah. it messes your head up. What you ought to do is kind of back up a little bit, take North, South, and Central America and ask you who's right in the center of yes. it. Yes. And then that's us. And that pumps us up. It gives us an opportunity, and it gives us a chance to think about what our possibilities are when you expand and understand really where you fit in the global economy. And so I think we understand that fundamentally we have to change some things. We have to change governance in New Orleans. Politics has to become honest. It has to be open, transparent. We have to get more efficient and more effective, which we're doing. We knew that our education system wasn't producing you know, children that learned as well as they should. And so now we're in the forefront of education reform in the United States of America. Nobody is coming close to outpacing the work that we're doing with kids in the city that did not have an opportunity to learn now for the first time in the history of the state. We're out, we're out graduating the rest of the state and the sure. achievement gap between the kids in the city and the kids in the rest of the state is almost all closed. That's dramatic. When you look at the reforms in New York and Washington and other places, they're fairly good, but they're not that good. We also understand that in healthcare, we didn't need to wait on the rest of the nation to decide whether they were going to be for the Affordable Care Act or not. We got to work on the one thing that everybody agreed on, which was preventative care, right, made people better before they got, it got too expensive to take care of them when they're sick. And we created 88 primary health care clinics that take care of 350,000 people wow. now. So those basic building blocks are being put in place. And, you know, our expectation is that in 2018, on our 300th anniversary, we're going to be ready to kind of say to the rest of the country, we're back and we feel great about ourselves and we want you to come on down. Bigger and better than ever. Bigger and better than ever. Mayor, thank you so thank much. Thank you. It's great to meet you. I appreciate it. And for more on New Orleans and Mayor Mitch Landry, be sure to check out GenConnect.com.